Hello, David Zritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. Well, that's sort of a less exuberant opening than I usually do, and that's because it's the day after I've come back from my Switzerland vacation, about 10, 11 days, a little bit of mixture of business, Bond, and couple vacation in our favorite country, Switzerland. It's beautiful. There was incredible hiking. There was good friends. There was a little bit of bond action as well. You'll see it in other videos. But the reason why I'm dressed in an undershirt, unkept, unshaven, hair unbrushed, looking a little worse for wear is because I fell off the wagon. The chuck wagon, the paddy wagon, which wagon, David? The, the Bond Fitness Challenge wagon. Just admittedly, I, I decided that this was going to be a vacation where I wasn't running down to the gym every single day. I wasn't also going to be particular and overthoughtful about what I was eating. In other words, I wasn't on a specific nutritional focus. I ate whatever Switzerland decided to give me. I know. I ate cheese and I ate beer and I ate beer with cheese and I ate sausages and lots of cow products and not any of these things are particularly bad for you, but I had lots of desserts and whenever desserts were afforded to me, I would eat them. I did quite a bit of drinking and like I said, a little less activity. Sure, we did incredible hiking and two, maybe three times out of the entire trip, I went into the gym and did some light exercise. But all in all, I fell off the wagon. How do I know this? Well, first of all, I can tell just by the way clothing fits. Towards the end of the vacation, I was wearing the same trousers and they were a little tougher to button. Yeah, I, I, it's not just physically how I look, it's how I feel in clothes, how I feel in my activity. And I could tell that things were accumulating. This isn't just over this vacation, but over the last month, I fell off the Bond Fitness Challenge wagon. So this video is all about getting back to center. And the first thing is not even about physicality or fitness or diet. It's about the old noggin, it's psychology. So first thing I'm gonna do is, what I'm not going to do, and that is I'm not going to beat myself up. Life is to be enjoyed, and I enjoyed myself, and now I've got to pay the piper a little bit and, and, and get back to my, my happy center here. So I'm not going to look back and go, oh, what did you do, David? You're destroyed. Give up. You know, no, no, no. There is a journey, and this I'm going to take you on the journey of getting back and focusing on health and fitness. And a part of that is just being realistic. So I probably about a month ago, I was weighing my best. I, I was in the best shape. And when I'm about 164 to 165, 165 pounds, I tend to look best in clothes. I feel really good. And now I'm going to <clears throat> focus on, yeah, looking at how much I weigh now. And look at that. Yeah. So I've basically gained about 10 pounds that I have to shed in a very healthy way. So you're gonna walk with me through this way and let's take a look at some of the changes that I can make to really inform the final deliverable, which is getting back into shape, getting closer to that 164, 165 weight, feeling in good shape, feeling powerful mind and body. Let's get to it. Okay, so here I am in my office, first day back from vacation, again, after falling off the wagon, whatever that means. And I'm not gonna go Spartan with everything, but I am gonna go Spartan with some things, and that is my nutrition, my diet. So what I brought for my entire lunch today is a bucket. That's not a bucket. It's um, it's Chobani, it's non-fat Greek yogurt. I, you could get the 1%, you could get the 2%, but I like the non-fat, it's more psychological. So this has 16 grams of protein and five servings, so you do the math. And I will probably eat the entire thing today. Now, some of you say that's a lot of dairy, but it works for me. I did not eat breakfast this morning. I'm not 
doing intermittent fasting on purpose. I just didn't do a big workout after my first day back. I'll do a big monster workout tomorrow. You'll see what I'm gonna have after my workout. I have a post-workout nutritional program that you'll see, whether you agree or not, we'll find out. But this is my Spartan thing. And then I will drink, oh gosh, probably like eight to 10 of these while I'm here at work before going home. This is it. I am avoiding sugar altogether. I'm avoiding alcohol during the week until I get myself right-sized again, but this is what I'm going towards. Okay, it's pretty early in the morning again. Still on my kick because I fell off the, the wagon, if you will. Well, let, me, let me tell you what's transpired over the last probably two days. Um, so I did the, the weigh-in and you saw what I had brought to work just a basically a jug of yogurt and I did that pretty much every day that's what I had after my workouts I have this fair life whey protein it's about 42 grams it's my post workout but it also acts as my breakfast you know keeps the hungries away if you will but it's also 42 grams of protein so it metabolizes very quickly into the muscle. My activity level has been a lot of lifting. I haven't done a lot of cardiovascular or walking this morning. I plan on doing walking kind of around my lower collection area, as I call it. I kind of set up this kind of mini track where I walk amongst the different movies. Gives me a little bit of like eyeball magic because it's James Bond surrounding me. But it also, I put on, I can listen to uh, From Taylors With Love, uh, Thomas Crichton. I can listen to different podcasts. So it serves both educational and physical, and it gets me walking. After that, what I'm going to do is lifting again. I'm going to be doing some just very simple uh, dumbbell curls, uh, some pull-ups, some push-ups, little isometrics. I'm going to be adding a little bit of the P90X. I'll get into some of those specifics, but it's, it is mostly lifting. That's what I'm focusing on. Now, it's two days after I just showed you that last weigh-in, and already I've gone from <laughs> that poundage to now I'm 168.4. And you're like, hold, hold, hold on a second, David. That's, a, that's, by my calculations, it's about six pounds. How do you lose six pounds in two days? You've heard the term, you're full of it. Yeah, so um, <laughs> this is going to get real. You, you won't get this from another Bond channel is what I'm saying. But there are certain bowel movements that you have. And so when I weighed myself, I had a buildup, if you will, of travel BM, bowel movements, that I have, um, this is when I lose thousands of people, released, okay? Mostly through diet, right? You know, leafy greens, a lot of leafy green vegetables and roughage and things like that, and protein. And I've released it, but also I've been really focused on no sugars whatsoever, no alcohol whatsoever. I'm probably going to break that tonight because I'm meeting my good friend Kyle for a steak dinner in New York. Tiny steak. So here's the other thing that I've got to prepare myself for. I'm heading now in to a really big challenge. And I know you all have this challenge too, which is like every day is an event. Every day is a birthday party or a celebration. It's like, oh, you know what? I'll do my Bond Fitness Challenge after this event or after this weekend because I've got a beer festival, whatever it is. So this weekend, I've got the Live and Let Die Celebration by Martine Mulder. And I'm going to be with a lot of Bond fans. And there's like McKellen tasting and there's other whiskey tasting and then there's martini tasting and champagne and canapes and big sumptuous robust dinners. What I've got to do is I've got to calculate in my head. First of all, I'm going to be waking up at the hotel every single day, no matter what happened the night before. And I'm going to force myself to go down and work out. Activity is huge. But for me, activity is only 30, 35% of the battle with my physical and mental being. I've got to also watch my diet. So if I go for a steak dinner tonight, which I will, my philosophy is I don't need the 12 ounce for lemon mignon. I'd like it, yum, yum, yum. But no, I'm going to have, you know, the eight ounce and maybe I won't even eat the whole eight ounce. Maybe I'll have six of the eight ounces. So it, it, it's, a, it's portion control. I'm not going to get the cream spinach. You know, I'll get the uh, asparagus, clean asparagus, and I, I'll say very little oil on that. There's little tiny things that we can do that have real incremental changes. And that is the journey 
of the Bond Fitness Challenge and getting back on the wagon of it. It's not trying to pull the plug and get back to 164, 165 pounds. I don't think that's realistic. But if I could come out of this James Bond weekend holding, holding the fort together, hear me, baby, hold together, Star Wars quote, of 167 to 168, and I don't gain any weight, I'm all the better for it. Now, we're doing walking, look at my fingers. We're doing walking tours of New York City, so that's going to help in my activity. But the gym, the nutrition and diet, and thinking about portion control and the amount of alcohol I'm going to imbibe and having tastes of alcohol instead of like, oh, look at me, I'm in a fraternity. I need to get drunk. I'm never like that. I have two drinks maximum per event, two drinks, that's it. And then I stop because number one, I want to be of a sober mind, you know, maybe a little, a little tight, but not too tight, as Fleming says. But the other thing is alcohol consumption, it just reduces, reduces the calorie burn that you have. And I don't need that right now when I'm trying to get on the bandwagon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you. I'm going to do my lifting. I'm going to take my protein and get ready for the day. And we'll see how I do in this bond event challenge. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge. Lots of people and drinks and food, but it's all part of it. Let's get to it. So something that really undoes a lot of the progress that I make when I'm trying to get back on the whole health trajectory is snacking. So a couple of things I have in my armament to prevent snacking, or I should say to have healthier type of snacking. Number one, I have Danielle always keep a bowl of really cold watermelon in the refrigerator, season denoting it, obviously. Sometimes it's out of season, but what this does is it's an easy snack. It fills me up. It's got, uh, what is it, lycopene in it that really helps a lot of the internal organs. But um, dare I say, it helps me to stay regular. But the other thing that I do is I'm constantly drinking this. What is this concoction? Look at that, Bond Experience Cup. How's your branding game strong? Yeah, uh, no, so it's ginger. It's just ginger powder. You can get this off of Amazon. You put like a little teaspoon in hot water and you can, you get like three or four cups out of it. And I drink it throughout the morning. It not only fills me up, the ginger helps the flora in my stomach. It also prevents me from snacking, but, but my real secret weapon, Bugs Bunny's secret weapon are these puppies. Yeah, these are carrots. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, they're not baby carrots. Baby carrots an abomination to man. They're slimy. I like the real kind of organic carrots that look like they were plucked out of the ground. I don't strip them of their skin. I don't shave them or anything like that. I just eat them and bite them. Why are these so good? Well, first of all, it's very satiating. Lots of good vitamins to help you. But more importantly, the crunch factor. I need a crunch factor and my undoing has been snacks. Like I said, you know, potato chips or tortillas or just crunchiness, pretzels. Instead of jumping into that, I jump into a carrot. I'll have two medium to small size ones, not the monster ones, but not the baby carrots either. And these type of things, I'm telling you, they satiate you, they fill me up. The crunch factor, I get the psychology, I got the physiology, I got carrots spewing out of the camera in 3D, it's all working together. I'm telling you. Mm. So continuing on, we've got to talk about what do I put in my gullet around the dinner time? And I tell you what I've been living off of, this, it's pretty simple. It's just grilled chicken. Danielle makes it with a variety of spices. She puts it on the grill. Sometimes she'll do a Mexican version with like a, a nice chocolate rub, powdered chocolate, not drizzled chocolate. We've got some arugulach, you know, we've got arugulach. I can't believe I just said that. It's not arugulach, David. It's, um, it's rocket, yeah, and some other lettuces in there. So it's just chicken and lettuce. And I know this looks like you're really dieting, David, but I enjoy this. It's a nice bolus of protein. It's a huge chicken breast. Sometimes I'm very active during the week when I've got work. So I don't have a lot of time to break for different lunches. So I keep this in the refrigerator at all times. This is the Chobani Greek yogurt, non-fat plain. I will put 
just the tiniest little dollop of lemon curd in there and it makes it taste like a pie filling. So it's a treat, but it's zero fat. It's 16 grams of protein in every filling. And then finally, as part of the snacks that I just mentioned, I will incorporate every now and then, and I, I keep these in the refrigerator, and Danielle does, hard boiled eggs. Like usually a whole colander of cold hard boiled eggs. These are great snacks. It's six grams of protein in with every bite. It staves off my hunger. It keeps me from going up into the, the, the bad pantry where there's like ragusa, Swiss chocolate and things like that that Danielle likes that I'm just trying to avoid. So I'm gonna dig into my dinner, but this is pretty typical and I'm not suffering. That's the most important thing. I'm not suffering getting back on this, this bandwagon. Okay, so it's been, I guess about two weeks since I came back from Switzerland, two weeks. And I'm happy to say that based on some of these techniques that I went over, based on discipline, dedication, like, oh, I don't know, uh, somebody offering me tres leches, three milk cake, which I absolutely love, and saying no to it, uh, thanks to all those little moments, uh, I've shed down. I have shed down. I'm, I'm back working out every single day. I've got coming, kind of my, what I call my bicep meat back, which is good. Not that it was, it's not going to go over one vacation, but you know, the, the kind of ball and everything like that. And the things that you've worked for, you, you want to, you want to sort of get them back again. So it's happening. I'm not back quite to my perfect weight yet. And what I don't want to do is calorie deficit. What is calorie deficit? So calorie deficit is a technique where it's mathematical. Basically, you reduce your calories so much against how much you're burning. So if you're working out, if you have constant activity, you burn a certain rate of calories per hour, per day. This is reducing your calories. So your burn rate is much higher than your intake rate, but much higher, not just, you know, quid pro quo in parallel, no. Calorie deficit is really reducing it hard so you start to shed weight. I haven't done that. I've avoided things. Uh, I've reduced my alcohol. I have, I know, James Bond guy, what are you doing? Hmm. But I have, and I'm fine. I'm fine, still enjoying it. I've also reduced sugars significantly. Not natural sugars, I talked to you about that, but I've reduced cakes and cookies and ice cream and all the things that make life worth living. Nah, I'm just kidding. I, I just, I have, uh, I haven't even really been tasting. And, and you know, there's a technique where, and I know this is going to shock some people, you don't have to eat a whole piece of cake. Someone serves you a piece of cake. You don't have to eat the whole piece of cake. You're not eating the whole piece of cake to get full, but you could take a taste of it. I'm not even taking a taste of it. That's how disciplined I'm being. And portion control as well as what time I'm eating. So I'm eating earlier in the day, my bigger meals, not at the end of the day because you eat your big meals at the end of the day and then you go to sleep and it just stays. It just stays and gathers and does evil things to you. So I'm getting there, but it's at this time in this kind of reboot, if you will, that I like to add a little something to the mix. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to do different activity things. So it's beautiful out. It's the fall. I've started walking more, but I'm actually going to be adding a new cardiovascular type of exercise that also has lifting. So what I'm doing is I'm doing pull-ups. I'm doing wide. I'm doing this. I'm doing in the center with thumbs across and then push-ups. And what I'm doing is, and, and here's a bit of a technique, I'm doing these in succession. So I'm doing 10 quick pull-ups, then I'm going straight down and doing 40 push-ups, about shoulder width apart, okay? Not too close, not staggered, nothing cute, about shoulder width apart. Then I'm going back and I'm doing wide grip. Wide grip pull-ups, just 10, just 10 but 10 clean ones, not touching the ground, 10 clean ones, and then hit the ground, 40 push-ups. Then I'm doing close grip, close grip, really close. Not that, this, thumbs apart, and I'm doing 10. Boom, 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 and then boom, back down, 
40. And I'm repeating that. I'm doing that circuit three times. And let me tell you something. Oh boy, not only is it working in a very efficient burn, but I am working my shoulders, my biceps, my back, my chest, everything, even my core when I'm going down because I'm keeping myself nice and straight. So it's a technique that I've added. I've just added it. I've just added it in the last two days. So I'm going to revisit you in a few days and see how we're don't going with the activity. And then I'm going to show you some of the activity things that I'm doing in case you want to replicate. Again, all of this, hopefully, hopefully, is just acting as a sense of motivation because as Bond says in Skyfall when he's trying to get back to center there, um, you can enjoy death, you're just enjoying death, but then you've got to come back from that and you've got to live. And that's what we're trying to do in this video. Let's see how we do. We'll see if I, I advance the prognosis of the hashtag Bond Fitness Challenge. See you then. All right. Well, I am uh, back from work and uh, the pitch went well. Yeah, really well. Yay. So one of the things that did happen, though, that I do want to talk about, because it is part of this whole process and technique, is simply coming to terms with what is being served there. Now, imagine, if you will, a corporate table filled with candy and nosh and snacks. There was breakfast pastries. I don't think I need to tell you the dumb moment that uh, those are big no-nos. So I didn't hit any of those. But the other thing is there were juices out. There were sodas. Didn't touch those. Had my bottle of water. I take it with me so I don't have to rely on, is there going to be bottles of water? Because there never is. It's always soda. It's always juices and things like that. So it was perfect. The other thing is suddenly lunch was served. Um, it was sandwiches. And as I've heard this from time and time again, people will say, you know something? I'm really watching myself. All I had today was a sandwich. Well, first of all, sandwiches can be incredibly fattening and not a lot of nutrition. There's not a lot of nutrition in bread. Uh, bread also has a lot of carbs. Carbs go down to sugars. Sugars are no good in many cases. You need a little bit, but that's too much. The other thing is they're covered in slath and mayo and Thousand Island dressing and things like that. So the dressings themselves, if you've got grilled chicken, if you've got vegetables on a sandwich, that's all good stuff. It really is. But then you add all these other things that make a sandwich a sandwich and it just goes downhill. So I avoided all that. I um, stayed the course and now I'm back at my home office and I'm going to have a lunch of like grilled chicken and salad, which that's on the right path. Hmm. So I'd be remiss in talking about this subject without talking about the physical aspect. I know there's been a lot of psychological, philosophical, and even nutrition, but yeah, what, 40% of what I'm doing is physical. You got to get up and moving. In fact, some of the longest living people attribute moving your body well to being well, to being healthy and a long life. So keeping moving is everything. I think some of you know that I've been doing P90X3 for a while. It's a lot of movements, a lot of pull-ups. I have a pull-up bar right next to me and I do different types of pull-ups. I do an incredible amount of push-ups in between different exercise with perfect push-ups. And I like to keep it very simple. I have these adjustable dumbbells over here for some very simple exercises. Again, just trying to keep it simple. For example, I will take these and I set this on 25 pounds. I'll put my legs a little bit spread and I'll simply just do very good curls. Not overly slow, but not like, you know, pumping it because then you lose form. Form is everything. What I try to do is not look down, not look up, look straight ahead, square my shoulders back, not hunch forward. Good positioning is everything because I don't want to be hunching. That's what happens when you get a little bit older. You just start to hunch and just slowly curl up. I find a fixed place on the wall, usually listen to music, and I will curl. Now, once I do that, I do that on each side 10 times. I will part my legs diagonally and I will do these. All right, so this is like a hammer curl and I will bring those up 
to my chin, not smashing my chin, again, keeping my eyes fixed in a place. And I'll do these again, each side 10 times. Then I will repeat that four times. So I'm doing four sets of 10 reps on each side. So I do 20 rep, then I'll do the other exercise. I'll put a push up series of 40 push ups in between each one of those. And I make sure, <laughs> this is a big thing. I make sure that I stretch really, really well afterwards. I do have some other things that I use that I think are worth mentioning. First of all, I've got an ab roller. This ab roller is everything. You know, I'll do sort of these ab exercises, but it, it works out the shoulders. It works out the back. I've got a strange hand going on here. I'm just realizing that. That's from wearing polo shirts throughout the summer. That's fine. And I also use this thing called a BOSU ball. Now the BOSU ball, I do martial arts. So I'll do nunchucks, I'll do bow staffs, joe staffs, all types of things, even a little bit of sword play. And I will stand on that while I'm doing these things because it works out my core. Yeah, it's, it's the balance and standing on it that is really the difficult part. So it gives a little bit and you've got to really balance your body. Plus you're trying to do all the movements and it's a great way to do stability exercises, balance, stamina, and yes, it works cardio, but in a very fun movement way. You could tell by my room here, I'm not a treadmill guy. I can't do it. It's too boring. If I want to walk, I'm going to aggressively walk outside. You've probably seen some of my discussions. I'll do a podcast, I'll multitask. That's my outside bit. So in doing that, I, I've got to do something that's a little bit more fun and playful. And I think that's why I've been able to keep on this track. Would you believe me if I told you that food and even fitness, the moving, the exercise is not the most important part of being successful on this journey. It's something a little bit more here and it's around organization. So I'm sitting in my home office right now. I've got my computer in front of me and I wanted to talk about how do I organize my routine? There is a routine around getting back on the hashtag bond fitness challenge. And it starts with making sure that every single day I have it carved out just like a meeting that I'm going to work out, that I'm going to focus on my health and fitness. In fact, after a cup of coffee, I quickly check my emails and I immediately jump into working out, eating right, thinking about my food for the day. And I put it in there like a meeting and no other meeting to me is a higher priority than that meeting. Yeah, that's how I do it. I say that, well, if somebody from the UK wants to speak to me earlier, if I have an early morning meeting, can it neutralize that meeting? No, no. It's always the most important part because I know it sets me up psychologically, inspirationally, and it's a part of discipline. And that's the second thing I want to talk to you about something being hard. It's about routine and organization, but it's about discipline. You have to make sure you understand your why in doing this. It can't be just to look like somebody else or you went a little overboard. It's got to be bigger than that. And that part of the discipline is understanding who you want to be, not just to other people, but to yourself. I want you to watch this video because it's a sort of difficult video to embrace entirely. I know it flies in the face of some people's philosophies, but I think it's important for you to watch it. Check it out. When I see a fit and athletic man, I can tell you immediately he's got several great traits. He's got the trait of consistency. He's got the trait of focus. He's got the trait of discipline. He's got the trait of delayed gratification and he's got grit. If you are fit and athletic, it's because you have put yourself through consistent workouts and constant clean eating over a long period of time through the traits of discipline, focus, consistency, and delayed gratification, and you have grit. And that tells me a lot about you, and you are the type of man I wanna, I wanna do business with, I wanna be friends with, and you are the type of man that I admire. 
All right, so that video is important because as much as we are a society that does not want to judge on body type, on fitness, etc., they do. And it's not because of an attractiveness or this person's better looking because they're in shape. Maybe there's a little bit of that, if we're being honest, but it is about the fact that if you look at somebody that's disciplined enough to be in healthy shape, I'll just put it like that. They don't need to be an Adonis. They don't need to be Schwarzenegger or you know, any of these people, you know, a, a movie star. They need to be in healthy shape. Then that says something about them. It says that they're disciplined enough to really organize their life, that they can put down a piece of cake and they can think about the mathematics behind calories, that they spend time focusing on fitness because they know that's a part of their everyday health and wellness. The fact that somebody can show up for working out, that shows up and thinks about what they think about and the consequences of that can translate to business and your life and even your relationship. There's a reality to that. So the last point I want to get across before we get to the results dun, 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 is something called the line of sight. Now, the line of sight is something very important for some people and it's meaningless to others, but I use it. So what is line of sight? Line of sight is looking down the road, looking down from where you are when you start this journey and focusing on a point. It's a compass point. For example, it could be your daughter's wedding. You want to look your healthiest and best for your daughter's wedding. It could be a series of pictures. It could be a video that you're doing. You want to look your best. You want to feel your best. It could be a marathon. It could be that you're going hiking with your significant other and you don't want to be sitting there. You don't want to be that guy or girl wheezing and, and, and straddling a, a tree and just hanging on for your dear life. It's some event and it has to be time and day oriented. For me, it is simple. Q The Music Show is having their concert spectacular in London. I'm going to be in front of, I don't know, a couple thousand people. Um, I want to be in really healthy shape. And I keep using that term healthy shape as opposed to good shape. I want to be rocking. I want to be ripped. I'm not going to get there. I'm 55. I'm realistic. I'm not doing this for a movie job. I'm a, I'm a guy that's got a day job. So I want to be feeling great. I want to have my stamina up there. I want to feel psychologically good about myself. And I want to be at my key weight where I feel like clothing and things fit right. I'm going to be up on stage. I'm going to be going to events and parties. I'm also going to be moving around London for three and a half days like crazy. There's meetings and there's events and there's dinners and lunches and drinks at Dukes. So I want to be in really healthy shape to get myself through that. So that is my line of sight of saying, this is your journey and it's timed, but you have to make your line of sight realistic. You can't say to yourself, it's Monday, this coming Saturday, I've got a party where I just want to look my best. It's not a bad thing to do that because at least you get started, but your line of sight should be realistically out a little bit. For me, it was about what? month and a half to two months from when I came back from Switzerland. So it's perfect timing where I can actually, here's the key, make an impact, make a difference. It's really hard to make an impact in three to four days. In fact, if you're waiting around, you know, fingers thumping on your desk and wondering where is the impact, where's the change, where's the reaction, you got to give this time, be disciplined, be organized enough, create it your line of sight and you'll be good. All right. Guess what time it is. It's time for me to stop talking. When I'm filming this, I've got about a week and a half until the results. So now we're going to go directly to those results. And I'm going to be very honest about how do I think I did in this journey? Here we go. Okay. We talked about line of sight. Today is the day. This evening I take off to London. Yep, I'm heading off to the weekend that I was talking about. A lot of bond events, a lot of bond connections, meeting with people, emceeing the cue the music concert spectacular. And I talked to you about this was part of my why. This was part of my why of getting back on the bandwagon after I'd fallen off. 
or hashtag Bond Fitness Challenge. I went through some of the techniques, I went through some of the trials and tribulations, and here I am today. So a few stats real quick. I did meet my goal. I, I don't know if I would have put out the video if I didn't. That wouldn't be very inspirational, although maybe it would have been. We'd been like, hey, we all go out on goals and, and sometimes we fail. And if we fall, let's fall forward. That would have been a great like cat poster. I'm happy to say I, I did make my goal. So here we go. I am down to 165, 166. I measured, I did a, a quick weigh-in this morning. It was 165. Did it about an hour and a half later. It was 166. I'm taking it in the middle, but that was my goal weight. And again, it's not about the pounds. It's the way things fit and look, clothing, how I feel. And we've got to talk about not just the weight, but how I feel. I'm telling you, I truly do have more stamina and more energy. I introduced some new techniques. I introduced uh, new things to my diet and nutrition. I hate to call it diet. Let's call it nutrition. And there's an adage. It's not mine. I'm robbing it from somebody that says you cannot out-train a bad diet or bad nutrition. And that is true. And that's why I kept very disciplined and very honest with the types of food that I was eating what I was consuming, when I was consuming it. And I have to tell you, I wasn't miserable one time. Like, I know you're like eating carrots and watermelon and, and Greek yogurt. It's like, it's so boring. But I had other stuff too. But I made smart choices. Like we went to this kind of gourmet Mexican restaurant. People had tacos that I was with. That was great. I didn't have tacos. I had a cauliflower rice bowl, which sounds really boring to you. But then they put all the chicken and the taco type fillings in there. I just didn't have the shells and, you know, the, the sour cream and the, you know, all that other gunk that gunks up everything else. And I'll tell you what, I, I know I'm doing like the Jack Lane thing. What happened was, I don't know if you could see this here. I'm trying to put it against a white background. I whittled down this area. You whittle wabbit. I sound like Elma J. Fudd. But I whittled away this area. So now I've got, I know this is getting very personal, but I've got kind of this arch area that I have when I'm not carrying extra pounds. When I'm carrying extra pounds, I get this kind of like back fat here. And I gain pounds in two places, or I gain at least what it looks like weight in two places. I gather it in my face. And if you go back to the beginning of the video, my face was more full. It just was. It was, you know, five pounds more full. So now it's, sort of how I want to look. And then also I gain weight here. So here and here, and that is happily, you know, they say the last place to lose it is the last place, the last place to, first place to, I don't know. I'm, I'm making this up as I go. It's gone. It's gone. So based on the discipline and what I did, it worked. Now, weight, look, feel, all those things, they're fantastic. We got to add that up in the score of did this work. But I also want to talk about the why of the accomplishment. This is the psychology of this video. This is the psychology of getting back on the bandwagon. When we push ourselves to do something difficult, challenging, nobody regrets it. Even if you fail, even if I had failed in this, I would not have regretted it because I made the changes, right? I pushed myself to get extra hard. You know, I, I, I wanted to put extra muscle back on to make sure that if I lost the weight, I wasn't losing the muscle weight. So I had to concentrate on a certain amount of protein and certain types of exercise to keep, you know, pectoral definition at 55 plus. All those different things have to add up. And so when you do that, the psychology of accomplishment, of being disciplined, of knowing that you can do these type of things is pretty cool. So in conclusion, I hope some of these little tidbits were helpful, but here's your opportunity. I know I always like to have um, audience participation, let's call it. This is your opportunity to feed us some of your tips and hints down below in the comments. I'd love to know, for example, what are some of the nutrition things that have helped you or those disciplines or those mindsets that have pushed you forward to be the best version of yourself? That is the why behind this. Not to look better for others, but to be the best version of yourself. It's very Bond-like to do that, despite what Craig's Bond says, Inspector. 
It's very Bond to do that. And so I hope there's something that you could take away from this video. All right. I got to get packing. I got to go. So this has been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. We're going to see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.